This is the audio check. This is on the rocks. Something or rather number. We are six. Number five. Six. Number five. Number, oh, actually, we six. Four. Five and a half. Four, four is right. two parts. So, so this is five. <laughs> yep. So on the rocks, five. Okay, you ready? Yeah, ready. Sure, why not? Go. All right, here I'm we ready. go. Are we rolling? Yep. All right, pass All right. it over. <laughs> pass it over for right now. While we're uh, pouring our whiskey, this is Kevin Raver, and I'm here with yes, Bill Gibson, Jody Grober, and Mike Amico from Olympus. It's the crowd plus one for On the Rocks. And of course, we can't start out any On the Rocks without at least something in our glass. And um, I'm sure our readers will have something to say about this. But uh, I'm going to save my drinking to the very end, because <laughs> I don't want anybody saying my drinking is affecting my talking. I am going to say a little yeah, I mean, hit because I'm welcoming Mike to the show for his welcome, visit. Welcome, Mike. It's been a welcome. long day. I'll cheer you, Thank but you. I won't drink you. Right. There you Sounds go. Good. So today we're here and uh, a new segment. Uh, a while back we did an episode uh, on uh, digital camera sensors, and one of those uh, camera sensors was a micro four-thirds size sensor. Uh, that sensor is used by a number of companies mainly Panasonic and especially Olympus. Ooh. And we're very lucky today, while we're at Roberts, uh, to have Mike from Olympus here, who's Thank going you. to tell us a little bit about uh, the Olympus stuff. Now, I own a lot of Olympus gear. <laughs> Phil owns Olympus gear, and Jody does. And you know, we own it because it's really part of what I feel mirrorless is all about. Originally, a lot of us talked about going into mirrorless because we wanted a lightweight camera system. Uh, it was easy to carry and not like weigh us down, but still perform like a major full frame camera. And that's what Olympus has done brilliantly. Now before Micro Four Thirds, there was the Four Thirds system. Now the Four Three stands for, just so you know, the format, okay, four by three instead of a three by two like you see on a regular DSLR. So rather than kind of steal the thunder and have people write me that I'm not letting Phil and Jody talk too much, I'm going to start off by allowing Mike to tell us a little bit about the Olympus camera line. Because you have wait, an wait, extensive Mike camera line. Mike, is me or Phil? <laughs> we're we're going to let Mike talk first. I'm going to talk okay. through the whole thing. You're not getting a word in edgewise today. Okay. So you know ex explain to us what we're seeing here. Um, and then hopefully some of us can talk about our experiences with these cameras. Sure, systems. I mean, I, so I brought some of the cameras over here. So um, just a few of the OMD line and the, and the pen, obviously. Um, we were talking about some of the names. OMD. Of the okay. OMD, what is OMD? What is pen? What is, um, the OMD is sort of, I mean, we, we kind of kept with the traditional OM camera, which was our, our film-based camera. Um, it was always one of the smallest SLRs. Uh, single lens reflex cameras that was out there. So we were always compact in the film camera era. Um, so with these, we kind of kept with that small compact size. Uh, the OMD is the OM digital. So that's where that comes from in the OM line. Uh, as far as the EM series, so you have the OMD EM. You have the 10, the 5, and the 1. It's kind of backwards. The 1 is the pro camera. That's, so that's the high-end camera, right? Look okay. at Jody. He's, All right. He's, 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 Five is the mid-range, <laughs> ten is the entry level. The pro camera, but, but there's the new, the new would ultra you stop? pro camera. There is no new camera. That, <laughs> this isn't Micro Four Thirds rumors. <laughs> okay. this is, so, so here's what we have in front of us that's, that's real. The OMD EM1, let's say, which is this guy, mm -hmm. uh, it's the E mirrorless. So we had the E series uh, that came out in the uh, early 2000s, I believe. Um, so now you have the E mirrorless. The E series was the original Four Third series. I never knew so, that until you just said it a few minutes ago. That's brilliant. Now I yeah. now we kind of get the so it's long. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's long, but it kind of makes more sense, right? And then the ten, the five, and the one. A funny know, thing about the size. Even more, but, yeah. Trying to convince Mary Jane, my wife, to to agree to the switch to this. Right, right, right. First time I handed it to her, without the grip, just like this. I handed it to her. She held it. and She goes, "Oh, this is way too small." Yeah. Oh yeah. I was like, that really surprised me. I was yeah. like, 
I thought that was a good thing. Well, it's interesting. I was at uh, your Carmel location uh, last year, and I they had a couple of uh, of old uh, DSLRs out, uh, some Nikon's actually, and um, and I was shooting the 7100 at one point. And so I said, oh, you know, I'll put these away. They were on the counter. And I picked one up, and I hadn't held one in a couple of years. Holding an SLR again felt really odd because it just seemed really fat. Mm -hmm. But yet I do get guys that go the opposite way, customers that'll pick up my camera, and like you said, they'll go, this is way too small. I just can't handle that. So, but once you do, once you get used to that size, I mean, it's just amazing how they fit in your hand, how they feel, and how much fun they bring back to your shooting. So the Four Thirds was originally created in order to give you a compact camera that would be professional quality. You have the original four-third sensor that had the mirrored cameras, right? So your lenses were similar to an SLR because you had the mirror box and everything. Going micro four-thirds, which I kind of wish they didn't name it that, but it's the same sensor, just a smaller camera. So by naming it micro four-thirds, it makes it sound like the sensor like smaller. Yeah. Um, but actually, it's the same sensor that was in our SLRs. So, but now your lenses are more compact. You're closer to the to the sensor because you don't have that mirror box, um, and your lenses are going to be a lot more compact. So, again, you don't have to worry about carrying around all that weight. You know, so. in the beginning, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to go way back for a minute before I come back to the the, the digital side of things. Well, you're the one that can. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you were talking about camera obscurity. Well, here, here's where my my experience with Olympus was. <laughs> You know, back in the day, as I would say, you know, you're tired of hearing that, but it was the day. I was a Nikon FTN, you know, a Nickermat and uh, FE shooter. Mm -hmm. And then a friend of mine, his name was Robin Perry, a uh, real good photographer in, in New London, Connecticut, uh, turned me on to the Olympus OM, which was like a smaller version. But, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. you guys, are the, you know, you've always have been about performance, build, and compactness, and even yeah. back then. And I switched completely over, all over to Olympus back in there in the film days. Yeah. I have a little surprise for you. <laughs> Wait a second. Just, okay. just about what you're talking about. Hold on. Okay. Minute. Just continue. Talk amongst so, yourselves. Okay. <laughs> Jody's disappearing. Jody's so. gone. <laughs> Where's Jody's going? Like, Eric, I, I think I know mind. what he's doing. Does he do this a lot? We're talking about Jody's the gone. He just, days just goes away. Does he do this? Yeah. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> okay. So, you know, to, <laughs> the Olympus goes hmm? way back in regards to building really nice cameras. Right. And right. really, when you right. start taking a look at the build quality of these Olympus, oh, oh there look you at go. this. Yeah, there, that's a cool 35 camera. millimeter pan. Yeah. See, it was worth the trip. There, oh, yeah. That's pretty cool. Sweet. What do you think of that? Cool. Derek, Derek Martin here has had it rebuilt all the way. It's, uh, it's spectacular. Yeah, it's even got a yellow filter on it, so you can do and really good black. the contact sheet is amazing how many images. It's, and there's yeah, a little meter that tells you what to put shoot. the f stop. It's, it feels like digital because you shoot a roll of film yeah, for really cool. Yeah. Oh, wow. Half frame, 35. Yeah, you're half frame. So if you think cool. about that, so half frame is sort of like your four-third sensor is almost Hold it up frame. above the lens. So yeah, we'll put it over here. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It has 72 pictures on a roll of film. Let's put our pen F next to it. There well, there you go. You see that classic Now, this is the uh, Olympus Pen F. We'll talk about that in a minute. But right. this is uh, put out about, what, two years ago? Yeah, it's been about two years. Yeah. yeah. And um, I think around May. Went, so, I think yeah. Austin, Texas or someplace mm -hmm. when they introduced that. Mm -hmm. And it Very really cool is camera. a brilliant camera. I still use it's, it a lot for it's really cool. shooting yeah. on the street. It's a really cool camera. Now, let's let's talk about what you, you've you got Olympus gear. Yeah. I switched to it when it wasn't cool, you know, <laughs> back when. You were the trendsetter. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Well, the image is going to be so uh, dark, and you know the ISO sucks on it, and all these. I loved it even then because it was so small, mm -hmm. and it, and it, you know as long as you had good light, you could get some amazing stuff out of it. And it was so tiny. I mean, I'll, I'll never forget going to one of the early air shows that we were at, and I had the 75 300 zoom on there, and all these Nikon and canisters with a big glass, and they're looking at me like, what the hell is this guy doing with his little? And I'm just click. Click. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, you can see the cockpit, and you can read the guy's name on the, you know, and yeah. these guys have these giant lenses they're lugging around. And it was, you know, I just loved it from. And so, and even to the this day, what, what are you shooting with now? I'm um, shooting with an EM12. Um, I've got a lot of their glass. I've got a Panasonic G9 I shoot with a little bit too. But I like the ergonomics of the EM1 a lot better. I mean, it's just, I love yeah. the layout of it. Oh, yeah, it's, it's brilliant. Yeah. One of the things too is the lenses, you know, the pro lenses with the, the clutching mechanism. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Sweet. pro lenses are yeah. cool, and we were talking about the well, menu the a little bit. The 150-400 will be cool. 
<laughs> you see why I'm sweating? Because it gets me nervous. Uh, so, uh, I, I, yeah, unreal, the way this guy pushes. The pro lenses are really well made. I mean, you know, you have uh, everything from the weather resistance on the pro lenses to uh, just the, the, the clutch mechanism like yeah, you were which, talking about. And we were mentioning the menu before, and you can actually shut off the clutch mechanism. So if it's something where you don't manually focus all the time or it bothers you, you can shut that off in the menu so that you'll always be autofocus. Even once if you pull I, that out of the bag and it's once back I on Once I learn accident. to use the clutch, mm -hmm. and learning it means you have to you have to always check it before you shoot when you're hiking and stuff because you hit it by accident. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right, but right, once right, you right. learn to do that, yeah. I, I didn't realize how often I autofocus to get fine focus on a bird's eye or something like that. Yeah. You hit that clutch and boom, you have photo peeking yeah. and focus my in focus difficult it's shots amazing. of trees of birds and the such have improved. Yeah, the focus you have, you have to unreal. Used to it, though. You do. I, I've you had do. so many customers call me like, you have to learn. I don't want my camera work. It's yeah, like yeah. it's dead. Yeah. It's not working. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's a clutch on well, the lens. Well, well, I think we've all okay, done. Thanks, we, click. Yeah. I think we've all fall, fallen for that on this camera. But yeah. Yeah. Phil, Phil knows because Phil's been babysitting things. me through this whole ordeal. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a few things. There is, there is a little learning curve, especially on the pro camera. There really is. I mean, I look at the Olympus. I mean, and I came from somewhere else, so I had to learn it too. And and I look at it like. One, it's a tool, like every other mm -hmm. camera out there, and they're all good right now. I mean, you can't buy a bad camera today, right? It is a tool, and you really have to sit down with it, especially the EM1. It's like you just bought my pro camera in my line. You have to sit down and learn that tool, and you're not gonna learn it overnight, and it's different. Yep. Uh, they give you so much in the menu with Olympus that you can do almost anything you can think of with this. You can make it focus this way, make it focus mm -hmm. this way, change you your, really your function buttons. So it's kind of like Windows and Mac in the 90s, right? And we're Windows. Like you have all this leeway with these cameras. I always used to think and in the 90s. So I thought Macs were remedial computers. They were what? So they're I not. always thought Macs were, were remedial, remedial computers. computers. Right. So because they it's were the so simple. It's the same sort of but thing. But they were. Yeah. So if you work really hard on this, you can but type your name and have it run stuff. across the no. head of the old Mac. Right. So this is basically uh, Scott Bourne is one of our shooters, one of our visionaries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These, and um, these cheat sheets are exceptional. These are great, they're and we're awesome. going to do more of these. Uh, but this is basically called uh, Pretty Darn Sweet Bird Photos. And, oh, I can uh, see why, Jerry. It's, it's great. And Jody's had a so Jody took them all. Uh, he already has you know dibs on everything. Uh, but basically, it's a lot of tips from. <laughs> pretty it's a lot of tips from uh, from he, Scott. He doesn't shows, mention um, the uh, the uh, the 180 to 400 at all. Well, it shows a lot of uh, the equipment that Scott uses and uh, in some of his settings. It it's a great book for general bird photography, <laughs> and uh, and it also shows some of his uh, Olympus settings. I'm telling you, you're killing me. It's a Welcome to On the Rocks. That's fine. Yeah, that's yeah fine. Mike. I knew you were going to do this. I knew it. <laughs> He's got me dying. I knew he was going to do this. Uh, one of the other things about the, about um, the, about the pro cameras, and this is something, of course, you read in a lot of people uh, in a lot of uh, cameras these days about, you know, how how does the monitor work? Well, this one, you know, flips out, so if you can do selfies, you know, it, it turns around, so you can, you know, put it up high or put it down low. I thought we weren't allowed to mention selfies on on the rocks. That's not really a self Say you're a vlogger. The word. We discussed the word. We well, couldn't use the word. Okay, well, just say you're a vlogger, Jerry. You know, Jody, okay, I'm right. a vlogger. I can actually use it to vlog okay. with. <laughs> you want to vlog this? But in any case, one of the things that I also use with my um, uh, Olympus cameras is I, I do use the motor, the, the power grip. Right, right. Because uh, it does, I have big hands, and I find that the power grip does a really nice um, job for me. If I may, so. if you're doing birds, I mean, you have the monitor on continuously you have focus on continuous you dr you you want the grip for the battery yeah. because you go through batteries very 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 right more quickly right. they right. have a good battery but you go through them more quickly when you're doing continuous focus and have have sure. the monitor on all the time yeah with the em1 too i mean for me i use the grip when i'm shooting birds and stuff, you know with the bigger lenses and everything um whereas my everyday shooting i actually don't use the grip and i actually use one of the little promaster uh uh, L brackets, yeah. which works great. It gives me a little bit extra room for my pinky on the bottom, yeah. and I like the way that feels. So that works really well. Yeah, and it's also very good when you're doing because you have the vertical mm -hmm. controls on exactly when, when you, you flip go it vertical. Yeah. So. Um, you know, one of the cool things they've done with the ZM10, which is our entry level, and also the EPL9 pen camera, um, is they've actually gone to a more simple menu for an entry level user, which is kind of cool. So that's so tiny. It's a cool little camera. That's a 14 to 42. It's called an Easy Lens Electronic Zoom. So it just basically, when you turn it on, the lens comes out, but it's very compact when it's shut. So you turn it on on top. Oh. Just flip oh, that up. Oh, and? Oh. Huh? Oh, what? 
Did you say that? Want to say it again? Oh, no. <laughs> pretty cool, right? Oh, that's pretty sweet. There's always going to be that inevitable question about, well, it's a small sensor, so you really can't make mm -hmm. large prints off sure. of it. Um, I, I make my own prints, and if any of you have seen any of our Back to Print series, we spend a lot of time at my place making prints. I've got four printers going, and the quality of the file, and I think this is something that we should define. Well, everybody sure. wants to measure uh, the quality of an image based upon the size of the sensor, the size of the pixels, and so forth. Yeah. Olympus kind of has a magic sauce, and I don't know what other way to call it, but I sure was skeptical in the beginning. I mean, how can a small sensor like this yield a really nice file? And I'm telling you, I can go up, I, I go all the time up to 17 by 22 uh, with my P800 and Pro 1000 mm -hmm. printers without any issue whatsoever. Yeah, I wouldn't, I'd, I'd be surprised if you couldn't go larger. I, yeah, I do go larger, and I have gone larger. Matter of fact, yeah. I think there was in the Photokina booth where mm -hmm. Olympus had a shot of a whole, like, wall size image of a bunch of horses. I think they're the horses that were running around France. Or we're, we're showcasing now at our shows uh, six by eight footprints from our yeah. visionaries. So, I mean, those are 20 by 24, uh, not too big, but that's fine. I mean, it's, I think printing's a whole different industry now. You could do so much with little. Those um, are 20 so, by 24, they'd be sharp if they weren't on canvas. Yeah, I know, but <laughs> I, whatever. So, you know, it's like dogs do you want me to get my 24 36s that are 300 DPI out of the I mean, down. I mean that, that, was that a green heron? Yes. If that was on gloss, that thing would scream. So I'll do it on gloss. Just for you. Just for me. And I'll do it six foot by eight foot. Yeah, um, but, right on the stairway. Then. And I'll put it in your office. Six foot we'll we'll do a mirror on your wall. There you, there you go. But no, printing's a whole different industry now. And I think you can do so much now in printing. And, and I think that that's, you know, that there's the different cameras, the different size sensors, all that stuff. We can argue all day long about it, and there are differences on everything. I mean, there are different tools for it different things. It has its things. limitations. There are limitations, yeah. Um, yeah. and we don't, we don't claim to be like the highest sensitivity, highest ISO. Um, that's where the big guys are fighting right, right. now, and that's all they're fighting about. Yeah. You know, yeah. for us, we have the five-axis stabilizer. We have, you can slow down the shutter speed, take, the, take your ISO down. You have live and comp. Shoot. You have live comp. You have different live things that you can amazing. do with these. So yeah. we're really going for that compact, powerful. You know, you want to be out in the field, you want to go shoot landscapes, you want to shoot, this is, a, I mean, our 300 F4, which equivalent to a 600 on a full frame. Unbelievable. So, unbelievable. You know, Wait, and, you want to show can, them? And we can argue that all day long. Let's show what them. it's equivalent to, but that's what it's given you yeah. for a focal length equivalent. So here's something where, especially in, there you go, there's a 600 F4. So here's your, here's your, your size difference. <laughs> you know, if you want to be huh. a Schwarzenegger and carry this around, that's fine. And it's you a beautiful cool. lens. You look so cool. cool. <laughs> but with this one, you can handle it. Isn't it. And yeah, I can be in a cool. camera club. I can be... I'm 90 years old and I can walk out with this without even having a monopod that's and exactly still right. shoot with a professional system. And hand hold it. And hand hold it. Yeah. And that's where our system really shines. Um, even this one, the 150 to 600, which is a beautiful lens and, and almost everybody owns one of these now that's, that's shooting birds. And this is my 150 to 600 equivalent. So, you know, here's, a, here's an equivalence that, there, there you go. Yeah. And you're carrying it around and it's about the yeah. same as far as your, your f-stops and everything. So in the right light, these are great lenses, both of them. When I travel yeah. to the Arctic regions, the Olympus camera system seems to be the camera of the guides. Meaning, mm -hmm. you know, we have Zodiac drivers and expedition leaders, and of course these guys are out in the wild and seeing all this yeah. beautiful wildlife. And you know, here we get on the Zodiacs and we've got our long lenses and monopods and everything like this. Sure. And they've got like a little side pack with three lenses in it and their camera. And you know, they've got a 600 millimeter equivalent and you know, the whole thing just is there with them and they yeah. whip it out, they shoot these pictures and they're remarkable. And you can't argue with them. I mean, for, especially if a lot of this stuff is just going into the web or something, you know, for yeah. sharing. You know, it's really remarkable. Now, the, the other thing I think you guys have done a brilliant job on, and this is why I love good engineering. I think any of us that are kind of photo techie guys love the engineering. And everything is so well thought out. And yeah. I think what I've always loved was the fact that the lens shade is built in the way it is. Right. So you can it's twist it one way well. and bring it out, and you can take it yeah. another way and take yeah. it off. We just had a little bit in of your a little horror Arcus story. Yeah. That, this is that great. hood, oh, yeah. 600, wasn't working correctly on the Yeah, on yeah the we were just fighting with that. Yeah. We had to fight yeah. with that hood just to get it and, ready. And how many of us yeah. use you know, the Arca Swiss clamps on, your on, long on a tripod? Yeah, I mean, this is And then you know, normally we have to go get an adapter and mm -hmm. screw the adapter into the foot, right. where this has already got it built in. So how hard is that to think about Yeah, Little things like that are really cool when these come out. They really make me smile. I see this stuff, I go, that's cool. Is, yeah. 
we've been waiting for that, you know. So, you know, it's really wild. The other things with the Olympus, which I'll show you, because I thought I'd get this ready, but, you know, when you're out in the field and you have your camera going and it rains, you really don't have to worry about it. And that's one of the great things. You can use the Olympus. water and not the whiskey. <laughs> I, I don't want to waste the whiskey. But that's one of the great things about Olympus, too, is, you know, you're, you're weather resistant and it's second to none mm -hmm. in the industry. So, you know, you can go near the salt water or the dirt or whatever, and then you can rinse this off Just in the shower. Out, yeah. I mean, it's it's really a testament to how well thought out so and how well executed they are. How often do you yeah. shower with your drill <laughs> I can't comment. Well, Jody's the one that maybe would. I do really like <laughs> yeah, showering Jody. with an Olympus. I don't know. But that's, Only the know. long zoom. Yeah, but that's uh, neither here nor there. I'll put that right oh, there. My heavens. Well, yeah, I mean, that's something I wanted to show because, you know, there's times I've been out with my camera, um, you know, at the zoo with the kids or, or you're out with a bunch of stuff on, it starts raining and you're putting your cameras away. Yeah, you yeah. And with it. this, you don't have to worry about it. You can take your time, you're out there shooting. As long as your lens isn't wet in the front, yeah, you, so you don't get them water shooting. droplets, even though that's cool sometimes, yeah. you know, happy yeah. accidents. Yeah. But On the Olympus yeah. camera launch for this camera, uh, they took us to uh, Iceland for oh, yeah. the, the launch, and yeah. it was just that's pure great, crap right? weather. Yeah. So it just rained on this stuff left and right. Yeah. And you don't and worry about it. It's no, and I have photos it's perfect, of you know yeah. the, the camera. I mean, the only thing you got to do is they just keep wiping off the front right? of the lens. I don't know yeah. if they planned for it, but yeah. you know, I just kept wiping off the front of the lens. Yeah. And you know, it's a nice finish because it beads up really nice, like a, you know, a good car finish. Yeah. You know, yeah. so and works. actually, you mentioned car, and I use one of those big microfiber cloths yeah. they use to wipe down the car, and I wipe the camera down after, and I'm good to go. So, and it works out great. But that's that's one of the testaments to it. I really love the system because. Yeah, I, I worked with Four Thirds initially in the beginning with Panasonic, and so I was there for the inception of it and and the whole thing. And coming back to it years later, um, it's it's been such a surprise to see how far the industry has gone in ten years with this this equipment. Uh, and it's really fun to shoot. It's it's just a pleasure to shoot this stuff. So it brings the fun back to your photography. Yeah, that's good. You know, if if you're a street photographer, for mm -hmm. example, and I, I you know every now and then I like. You know, hitting the street, especially when I visit a new city. Oh, yeah. And when they introduced this, we, we went to, uh, I think, Austin, Texas it was. Yeah. And this camera is such a cool street camera. Number one, really you got to like sort of that retro look yeah, yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, you know, cool. you, you can put on, like, what's it, the uh, 50 to one, you have a 150 or 40 to 150? Uh, 40 to 150, well, 40 yeah. 40 to 150. Yep, that's a beautiful lens. And you yeah. put that on, and you've got 80 to 300 yep. millimeter range. Yep, yep. I mean, it's like... I like to shoot with a 35 millimeter equivalent mm -hmm. or that zoom. Yeah. And you know, it's small enough, I can keep it low, I can pop it up and That's I can shoot very quickly. Right there. And I'm shooting across the streets, I'm shooting things without being obnoxiously obvious. Um, just, just a sweet camera. And it looks like a film camera, it, like has a rewind knob. Oh yeah, they I mean, totally went knob. for the old pen style. Yeah. And they really nailed it with this, and it's a testament to the engineers. This was supposed to be a piece, there's your 40 to 150. It's supposed to be a piece that really shines and shows the engineering feat on this, and it does. I mean, you have aluminum dials. You don't see any exposed screws on the camera. They taped up everything because they really wanted to give it that classic look and feel. It's, beautiful. Uh, it's really tactile. It feels really good. You have your color filters here, which is really unique on the Man, camera. That's so cool, too. It is cool. When yeah. it first was being introduced, a lot of people made fun of that. I, I did. Once you shoot it, it's actually it's pretty cool. cool. Yeah, yeah. you get a really cool color or monochrome. You can put you can put grain in there. You can do all kinds of different things and shoot JPEG and RAW. Yep. And then you have this cool monochrome, plus you have your RAW. And the JPEGs out of it are just They're amazing. amazing. Yeah. yeah. They really I gave are. you guys that print to use, which is really cool. Yeah. That was a JPEG out of that. So it's a really cool piece. I love it. And the other thing with the Olympus in general, but this one especially for me, if I'm out on the street shooting, sometimes you want to be like really inconspicuous. You don't want anybody to see you. So you use the app on the phone. You can have the camera hanging off your side and you can be over here on your phone shooting pictures. Yeah. Seeing what the camera sees. Except when you're when so. you're re when you're readjusting it, you look a little silly. Yeah, yeah like, whatever. But you know, yeah, use <laughs> that hip. You know, Jody, that hip action. The wireless you know. works. Yeah, yeah. unlike some other brands. I know. I, mean, I use it. I mean, it really does. It I really use, does. Yeah, yeah it, it really does work well. That's just my interest for it. I use it all the time. It's fantastic. Yeah, live composition. So live comp. Yeah, and and basically live comp. Yeah, it's a, it's a bulb feature. Yeah. So yeah, we also have live time, right. which is kind of cool. So basically, on you know most cameras, you go to bulb. And you hold down the shutter, and you're like, okay, one, two, three. And the cool thing about the digital cameras is you can see it count down. One, two, three, you're not looking at your watch. Then you press playback, and you see what you got, right? What did I get? Okay, I need like 10 more seconds, you know. With live time, uh, you actually have, uh, Olympus has created the ability, which we did create live view, by the way. So that is that is kind a of live cool. view is another. That's an Olympus innovation. Okay. First microscope in Japan in 100 years next year. Uh, so what we did is with with live view, it's like having a live bulb. Well, with live bulb also, um, where you press it down and you hold it, or you set it up where you press it down and leave it, and you can see your exposure taking place. 
So yeah, that builds kind of up cool. in increments, though. I think. Well, you, no, it, that's live time. That's live time. Okay. Yeah. Live comp builds up in increments. Right. So All now right. you have the step where I call them professional cheat modes because you almost have to know what your camera is doing it, to really addictive. play with it, and it's, it's addictive. So addictive. Yeah, it's from so light long. painting to yeah. star trails it's up to three awesome. hours. And what you do is you set an initial exposure. So let's say you're doing a cityscape. Uh, and you want to do some star trails or something. So you set up an initial exposure. Let's say it's F8 at like 10 seconds. So now you set F8, 10 seconds. You press that for live comp. It'll keep taking 10 second consecutive shots and blending them on top of each other. But it won't screw up the initial exposure. It only does highlights. It's, only, it's yeah. highlights. It's yeah. fresh pixels. So yeah. now your stars start moving, but your cityscape is still never there without overexposing. Wow, what, it's how, fantastic. How many times I wanted a camera that could do that? Yeah. So if you're now it's light cool. Painting, you can do that I with mean, any camera. I mean, I've always ended up having to do layering and just pick one base that's, layer. And that's exactly right. right. You can do it with any camera, but you're spending hours like you know that's shooting the this stuff and then yeah. putting it all together. Sure. This is done in the camera. You're watching. It, raw so, and or JPEG. But you got to so, determine what the base exposure should be. So if it's an easy a, way to do it. Yeah, depending okay. on how you want it, one of the easy ways to start is you just go into Aperture Priority and figure out what it's giving you for that exposure. Okay. Yeah. And then you can go into Live Comp and set it. That's right. Or work from there. So when I'm doing light painting out in the sticks, we do in complete darkness. There is no base exposure. Right. Oh. So I can actually so set it up. Dark with a flashlight. I can open the shutter. Put my flashlight on one quarter power. I usually imagine him in the dark, and then slowly yeah, watch it build. He's never going to overexpose it at that point. No. So yeah. you just yeah, yeah. you just exactly. slowly watch it build. Right? Yeah, yeah. So and light painting because then you could actually. Oh my heavens! Yeah. I'm thinking of all the possibilities. Oh, yeah. well, you can like, do amazing stuff. You know, like amazing. shooting cars and different things yeah. like that. Well, yeah. Oh. I mean, cars. You can take a, you can take uh, sparklers and write things. You can you can yeah. light people with the flashlights. You can you can do a million things. I mean, I've done waterfalls with it. Yeah, you know, this with, is this is just a. To me, this is just another part, you know, after doing this video about, you know, the digital wars coming yeah. in, you know, we're all talking about, you know, who can get better dynamic range, who can do this. There's so many cool little but features. That's the problem. We're all talking about the wrong no noise, which what happened to film. We loved the way that looked. No noise. Exactly. The best dynamic range. And we're all posting stuff on Instagram. It's like, you know, what happened to the fun? This is the fun part, no, no, this right? Is, and what about, like, things like, so you have live comp, right? You have, you have all this fun you can do. You're carrying this thing around. You can just... Who cares about all that stuff? I don't sometimes. think the, it's like when you should the, print it, you're losing the, some of that anyway. Just I don't think the loss in ISO is hurting what I do. That well, much. It would, yeah, it's a low bar. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> it's it's a very but you raised the bar. I, think, I, I could does. shoot a high ISO before, but the pictures weren't. <laughs> but I mean, necessarily so, keepers anyway. Well, for what you're shooting, you're going to lose things like whiskers at high. They're obsessed. You know, you're going to lose some of that detail. Well, they're obsessed with ISO because of what a full frame sensor is capable of doing. You know what? It's a great thing. I think yeah. it's a great it thing a that great we can thing, do it. But it's not but, the only thing. Well, right. it's not just that. I think we're. I honestly think in the industry we're doing a little bit of a disservice to new shooters because we're telling new shooters that you need high ISO. Right. You need to shoot it. It's great. We can shoot at five thousand ISO, not ten thousand ISO. Look at this. They don't even know aperture, shutter speed, right. and ISO. Right. They don't know what ISO is. They didn't come from film. It's just another way to get your light. They have no idea what they're playing with because they haven't taken a course on photography, basic photography. That's exactly right. that, that so they're seeing high ISO. How about learn how to they're, light what you're going to shoot? But yeah. that's the thing. They don't know that. And, and they're seeing everything coming at them with social media and right. with you know YouTube. And anybody can teach now, anybody. And so it's, it's nobody's fault. It's just the way it's kind of gone. There's so much information out there. But we're kind of doing a disservice, especially some of the pros that are... And I'm not saying anything against anybody I mean it but some of the pros that are teaching people are talking about how because they used to shoot film and it is cool as a pro yeah. that we can shoot at 10,000 ISO but some of these new shooters they don't know what the beginnings are like right. you're shooting a baby in window light or with light and you're shooting it at 10,000 ISO it's like no take it down to 200 like get some of that detail get some of that dynamic range you know you, you buy a camera that's $3,500 that has great dynamic range yeah. At 64 ISO. Right. Once you start going to 800, you start losing all no, that. That's that exactly you spent that. right. That's so, true. so there's different yeah. tools. There's ways to do it, and and they're all great now. But, you know, I think that we're just kind of doing a disservice. Yeah. We're not, yeah. we're not starting somewhere. We're not. We're just throwing it out. Well, there, I, think, so. I think you you give a you know. Not a robber. <clears throat> No, no, we're not. No, not at all. But <laughs> yeah. well, I think one of the things that we got to remember, and I keep stressing this, and I think this is what I like about the Olympus cameras and my experience with them. Yeah. And you know, you've heard me say. So, I mean, I've got Sony. I've got you know closets full of this sure. stuff. That's yeah. what I have because it's my website, and I have to use it all. And then I fall in love with it, and rather than sell it, I kind of keep it. And, oh yeah. You know, I just go. Was it Olympus Day or a different day? <laughs> but you know, the Olympus camera. I just can't stress about how much fun it is. And we talked about 
one or more of advantage with the clutching mechanism. You yeah. know, it's great to be able to like use autofocus and get where it is, but with focus peaking, you can then throw the clutch in Maybe. and it either locks it so that, you know, it's not going to drift right. and or it confirms exactly, you know, exactly where it's trying. going and to be, you, you know, with you the peaking. combine that with able to being able to carry it to where you need to That's, take the picture <clears throat> and it's unbelievable. Yeah, it doesn't take up yeah. much room. I mean, if you take this camera... It doesn't take up much room, you say. Wait a second. Ah! Uh, oh, no. Uh, <laughs> he has to be next to me. <laughs> what? What's he doing? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't take up much room. Oh, Jody, what are you Jody, what's the gimmick? <laughs> Raise point, eight-mile difficult hike to the ocean and back with up to a 600 F4, up to an eight. 60, 860, 5'6", all the way down to a wide angle. Yeah, the cool thing hands is you have hiking. everything out. If you don't mind out. looking like <laughs> that. I know. You got hands-free and hands-free hiking. <laughs> wow. This was That's me beautiful. Just for you. It's, you but know, everything's out. That is cool. I mean, you have everything. That is pretty kind slick. Of at your disposal. You and you know, have, what's that little thing hanging off the one? Uh, is that a this, tether? This is all peak design. Oh, yeah, check this I out. I want peak yeah. design to design <laughs> this because you get used to dropping your camera with a strap. Yeah. They need one of these, Little hooked it right on here, so catch. that if you drop it by accident, it holds onto it. Unreal. Peak design. Make this. We can go right to Kickstarter call and start the, on that. Call it the Jody Tether. Well, Peak Design doesn't make this either. I made that. Yeah. I love the Peak Design stuff. I have. Wow, all that's pretty cool setup you have. Yeah, yeah. try to set oh, it and get back it's back like, up with all this. <laughs> 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 can we do one last Almost thing? as fun as Jody. Wait, can we do one last well, thing? Not quite. What can we do? Man? Come on. What's your daughter's name? Lindsay. Lindsay, come here. This is Mike's daughter. Come on. Come say hi. She's not drinking whiskey. Say hi. We're not, we're not starting her this Say hi. Time. All right. There she is. All right, here's Lindsay. Ah, uh, you can see the similarity. I would be scared to death if I was standing next to him. I know, I know. You want to go on this side next to Kevin? We're uh, a lot more friendlier over, over here. Okay. Awesome. All right. Phil, do you have anything right. to... Uh, no, uh, think, end with here? I think it's pretty well covered. I, I ruined mean, it. A, you were pretty quiet. Today, great system. Actually. Well, I was like, kind of put me on the spot. I'm you know? always and quiet. I, yeah. And every time I started, you guys. We're going to have one episode right. where I can hear Kevin talk. And Phil. We need to have Olympus Part 2 <laughs> so that I can come back. Yeah. Well, well, maybe we'll go out in the field and shoot. <laughs> when you have the new camera and new lens. That'd be really fun. Yeah, when they have that, what is it that you're, we're, they're, we're, they're coming out with that 140? The 150, 400. Oh, yeah, it's got a new revolutionary mount. Yeah. And the. <laughs> okay. It's the next anyway. best thing. Um, you know, it's the next best thing. This is Kevin Raver with the Luminous Landscape. <laughs> We're on the rocks for sure. Mm. Thanks for stopping by and uh, being part of the fun that we have. Remember, I, I say it a lot. I'm going to say it a lot more, especially as the next couple months uh, begin to take hold and everybody's going to get really serious about the cameras and yeah. all the different things that are going to start happening in the industry. You know, don't forget about looking at everything out there that's mirrorless. You know, Olympus makes a fine line. They're built like tanks, and you know they've got some remarkable features, and they're lightweight. Yeah. And I really think you know they, they embody what mirrorless is supposed to be all about: lightweight and capable, and you know real professional the lenses are second to none. They're just really fun. Compact and powerful. You know, you know um, Michael Reichman, the founder of the site, was hooked on Olympus at one point, and you know, we spent a lot of time shooting Olympus together. He got me back on the Olympus Digital. And I still have my Olympus stuff. And yeah. I, I just can't get rid of it because uh, the lenses and everything just work. And I like going out sometimes on a Sunday and, and shooting with it. Yeah. Anyway, it's been a great to be here. It's uh, always fun to uh, hang out. Mike, thanks for coming thanks on for by. Thanks for having me. I appreciate Too it. Much fun. Yeah. And everybody, Chin -chin. cheers. All right, I'll finish it off with a cheer. And hopefully, I'll see you on the luminous landscape. We're out. Cut, cut. Thanks, guys. Give us 10 minutes and we'll wrap it up, okay? I promise. Five or 10 minutes, I will. Yeah, he even brought it up. He's so so they ask me questions and they come and talk. I'm trying to get used to this whole thing. I'm like, Poor Kevin. Well, well, He's having what a What are we on now, man? I know. I'm like, yeah. what, what am I on right now? Okay. Can we start over because I'm finally not sweating? No, we have to pack up. Whatever. Are we back? We're back. We're back. Oh, we're back. We're, okay. Are we recording right now? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs>